Hey guys, this is Damien with Billetproof Designs and today we have another video informing you about some of the products that we have and how to install them. Today we're going to be going over uh, ways to monitor the fuel level inside your tank without any electronics or having to take the gas tank cap. This is our 12 gauge sight glass. It is a uh, machined brass fitting with a glass sight gauge and it is glass so it will not yellow with the fuel or UV rays and it comes with a steel stepped bung. It has an inch and an eighth step and an inch and three eighths overall diameter and the thread accepts a three quarter MPT male thread. And we also have a different fuel gauge. <clears throat> this is an actual gauge where it will tell you the actual level inside your tank and this kit comes with everything you see here. It comes with a Tigon hose that's compatible with ethanol, gasoline, and oil. Two brass fittings, they're 90 degree fittings. On one end, there's a quarter inch barb to accept quarter inch ID hose. And then this is an eighth inch MPT male thread. And that thread is accepted by a three quarter inch overall diameter bung with a half inch step. And the step is in there so those fittings don't drop into your tank when you're going to weld. And the last thing this kit includes, constant tension clamps uh, made out of stainless steel. So now we're going to go over the actual install and teach you guys some, uh, some methods to better TIG and MIG weld and uh, install these so you have a leak proof fuel gauge system. With our 12 gauge sight glass, there's something to consider prior to starting your weld. Now since it is a, a tapered pipe thread, when you go to install the sight glass, you'll notice that it doesn't thread all the way down into the fitting. And even if you crank down on it with a wrench, you're not going to bury this all the way to the shoulder of the hex portion. So, in order to take care of that, if it's offensive to you, is to cut the bottom of the fitting. Now, when you cut it, take your time, because it's tough to add metal back and re-thread it. Take off an eighth of an inch at a time, and you can do this with a lathe, and you can also stick it in a vise and cut it off with a cutoff wheel. And each time you make your cut, deburr it, make sure there's no burrs in the thread, and put your fitting back in to see how much more you have to take off of this fitting. The more you take off, the farther this is going to thread down into your bung. And this hex portion, this hex shoulder, will be right on top of the surface of the bung. Again, you don't want to take too much off because the thread isn't going to tighten properly and make that seal that's required. Alright, now that we have our tank and our fittings, we're ready to figure out where we want to put this and then weld it up. So something to consider since this bung has a depth is wherever you put your hole you want to make sure that when this drops in that it's not going to interfere with the tunnel below it or any sheet metal that might be below it so just keep that in mind before you start drilling a big hole in this in the middle of your tank now again this is an inch and an eighth step so we need some sort of inch and an eighth hole in our gas tank and we used uh, an inch and an eighth hole saw bit just a regular bimetal hole saw bit with a pilot uh, you never want to use a twist bit when drilling into sheet metal. Uh, when the bit tries to break through, it's going to want to grab the sheet metal and, uh, and it's just going to make an overall mess and make your life miserable. So, inch and an eighth hole saw, drop the fitting in. So, since we're taking, we're going to have a, uh, a shielding gas of 100% pure argon and we're going to set the regulator to 15 PSI. That's more than adequate to shield your, your weld. So now we're going to set up the controls on the TIG welder to weld this up. So now that the machine's on, we're going to turn our amperage to about 80 amps. We're going to make sure our high frequency is set to start. If we were welding aluminum, we would keep it on continuous. And we'll turn our current to DC negative. If we were welding aluminum, we would leave it set on AC. On this tank, you'll notice it's a pretty flat surface, so when we dropped the fitting in, there was uh, very little space in between the bottom of the bung and the sheet metal in the gas tank. If you have a tank with a real tight radius, a real um, severe curvature, you may need to grind a little bit away on the fitting to allow the fitting to sit down a little bit farther against the sheet metal. The tighter the gap that you have in between your two metals that you're welding, the smaller the weld you're going to have and the less chance you're going to have for a Here we're going to TIG weld this and like we went over we're going to set our 
Our amperage to anywhere from 80 to 100 amps, that's fine. We have a foot pedal so we can control our amperage finitely with that. Now for the guys out there that have a MIG welder, you can absolutely MIG weld this. Uh, the recommendations I can make for both MIG and TIG welding is keep your heat down. You can see the heat around this is very minimal and the distortion is very minimal so there's going to be very little body work. And the way I did this was with the TIG weld I just made a half inch stitch on opposing sides continuing all the way around till each bead connected. And I took about 15 minutes to weld this all up to keep the heat down, so take your time. There's absolutely no rush, because that 15 minutes is a, a lot less time than it is to go doing body work and filling it up with plastic. If you're MIG welding, when you MIG weld, you don't want a continuous bead. You just want to tack, 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 overlapping the tacks and jumping around at the same time. And you're going to want to set your machine to about the same amperage, around 100 amps. And when you MIG, you want to concentrate that wire heat on the bung. There's a lot more metal here to absorb heat than the sheet metal, and you'll be less likely to burn through the sheet metal than you will be the bung. So concentrate your heat on this bung, and then just move down right to the sheet metal, and then let off the trigger. And then go to your next spot where you want to make attack, concentrate that wire on this bung, and then move down to the sheet metal, and then stop your heat. That'll make a nice little bead and a beautiful weld once you're all finished up. Now that everything's welded, we're ready for installation. And it's a pretty tough thing. You can use a liquid Teflon paste. You can use a Teflon tape. Um, you can even use uh, blue goo if you want. So after your fitting is cool, everything's cooled down to the touch, and you have your threads sealed up, simply thread into the tank, tighten with an inch and an eighth wrench, and then tech, check for leaks. Now we're ready to install our stepped bums in the side of our tank for our external sight gauge. So here we have uh, two three quarter inch OD, half inch stepped <coughs> bums. And the step is so uh, it makes it a little bit easier to, to weld in. The step keeps the bung from dropping into your tank. Uh, you can also, if you like, purchase unstepped bungs. Uh, they're a little more difficult to weld, but you can get a flush mount that way inside of your tank. It's, it, it's all preference, which you're, uh, what kind of look you're going for. So now that we have our holes drilled, we can start with uh, one bug. It doesn't matter which one you start with your weld. And uh, we'll do the same thing as our sight glass gauge. We'll do a complete weld, uh, paying attention to the heat that we put into the metal. And, uh, and just step around and if you're doing two, step to each side. Do a little stitch here, half inch long, and then do a stitch up here, let it cool a little bit. Go back here, another half inch stitch, and so forth until your welds complete. Drop the bung in place, it's a pretty tight fit. Make sure you have a nice joint there. If you have any burr left, it's gonna hold part of the bung up a little bit, and you're gonna to wanna to take care of that burr with a, a, a countersink bit or a, a rattle burr. Just make sure your bung fits nice and tight. It'll make for a, a smaller weld and a uh, less likely chance of having to re-weld it because of a little pin leak. So now we're ready to weld this. We're gonna start with the tack, just like we did prior. Once we have it tacked and we're satisfied, we'll make another tack to make sure it's, it's down good on both bungs, and then we'll begin our, our stitches. Just like the last bomb, when you make your tack, you're heating the metal up and then it's cooling very rapidly so it shrinks when it cools. And it's going to want to pull the opposite side of the material up from the, the tack. So just take note, you can actually see right here where it's lifted the, the bung a little bit. So you may want to get a friend to, to push down with a wooden handled hammer to, to tighten up that gap before you make your next tack. Otherwise your bung is going to be a little crooked. So now we have these bungs finished welded, both the top and bottom. And if this were a finished tank and this is a, a project that you're doing over the winter, once these cool down, it's uh, pretty much ready to install. Obviously, you'd probably have to do some paint work, but if you just wanted to get that out there and ride, um, what we'd have to do is put some pipe dope or a pipe sealer on each threaded side of the fittings, thread each one in, tighten it up, put our tube on, 
with our clamps and we're ready to roll. Uh, before you do that, it's a really good idea um, to check for leaks. To check for leaks, both of these bungs will get sealed up. Any other openings, pet cock, fuel tank would get sealed up. And uh, ideally, you want to put two to three PSI of pressure inside the tank uh, to see if it leaks. Or uh, a real simple way is just to fill it up after you plug these with some sealant. Uh, make sure that there's fluid to the level of each bung. Uh, if you have to, rotate the tank on its side. Put it on a dry surface with some tissue paper or paper towels underneath of it, and that'll quickly show if there's any leaks. It'll pee out. Um, that works just as well. Typically with a gas tank, it's, it's unpressurized, especially with a carbureted system. You're just relying on gravity. Huh? Just like that. Make sure you got a fair enough amount on there. We don't want any leaks. Fuel leaks suck. Good idea is to make sure that these fittings are cool prior to installation, otherwise you may have some issues. If you're going to make an S-pin, you want to try to point these parallel to one another, but not at one another. So these should be, if you were to draw an imaginary line, they be parallel. You can see how if they're cut to the right length, you get a nice little bend. Or you can point it up. Cut our one side with the pliers that I don't have. Push on. Install both of your constant tension clamps. We have both clamps installed. I marked the tie gun for the length that we wanted to cut it, cut it, and installed it. Now these are push-on style fittings, so technically you really don't need any clamps, but I like a little bit of added security. And again, there's no pressure in this system, so clamps aren't, aren't required. Uh, if you don't have the correct pliers for these constant tension clamps, you can use just a regular old pair of pliers or channel locks. Only squeeze them enough to get them over the fitting that you're working with. Otherwise, you could uh, put a little bit of memory into the clamps. Place your clamp on on each end, each fitting. These can certainly be cut down with a pair of side cutters if you wanted to, um, to be less obtrusive. And uh, with them cut shorter, you can also rotate these clamps back towards the tank. This way, it's kind of hidden. So this is the external kit that we have on our El Chucho. And uh, first thing is obvious. You can see that we don't have the constant tension clamps on this. I'm sure some of you guys out there have safety wire and safety wire pliers. You can do the same thing you want with, you can do the same thing with your setup. It gives it a more of a race look. And uh, you simply wrap, wrap the safety wire around here. Grab the safety wire at the bottom, twist it up, wrap it around, and then twist the back side to make your, your clamp. It's pretty simple and it looks really good. Now here's the oil bag on El Chucho. Same exact setup as the gas tank. Same bungs and same fittings. Same Tigon hose and we've also done the uh, same safety wire wrap on this. And again, this isn't a pressurized system, so uh, a simple push-on style hose will work without any clamps. Or you can use aviation clamps if, you, if that gives you a little more peace of mind. But uh, this has been on this bike for four years now and I haven't had a leak or a break in it. Uh, if you do install it on the oil tank, just keep in mind that if it's hanging out in no man's land, it does have the chance of getting caught by something, a stick or a, a road debris. And, uh, and you might not realize it since you're moving down the road and the oil's blowing out behind you. So just take note to when, uh, when you do put it on your tank, uh, where it's going to be located. You can see uh, I did it on mine on the back side close to the fender. This way it's out of harm's way. So I hope you like what you guys saw. I hope you learned something. And best of luck with your next project.